The fact that you have found your roots, having been born in a Hindu family and now practicing Buddhism, that you feel like through that you found your roots. Well, of course. The roots of Buddhism are in Hinduism. And so the roots are all the same. The soil is the same. The flowers in the garden come up differently. But it's all, it's all one. So, so don't worry about that. That's however, however you connect with your roots is what matters. And however you can grow highest is also what matters. In terms of this concept of emptiness, shunya. So here's, here's where on a very basic level, Buddhism and Hinduism speak about the same thing, but in different terms. So in Buddhism, we speak about shunya, emptiness. You meditate, you meditate, you meditate, you meditate, you meditate, you experience that state of emptiness. In Hinduism, they talk about wholeness, everythingness, right? Purn. You meditate, you meditate, you meditate, you meditate, you meditate, you experience everythingness, okay? Now, imagine that I have a glass jar of air. Closed jar, nice glass jar, about yay big, air, f full of air, sealed tight. Now, I smash my glass jar on the ground. Glass shatters. What am I left with? What do I have? Hmm? Hmm? Nothing, right? I had, I had a glass of air. Exactly, exactly. So emptiness, nothingness, as in previously I had a jar of air. Now I have nothing. My jar is broken. But the other way to look at it is where previously I had a jar of air. Now I have air. So there are basically just simply two ways of describing the exact same phenomenon. The exact same phenomenon. I'm not that learned in the, the Buddhist tradition enough in terms of the aspects of the philosophy or the terminology that they use. But what I know is that there is, as you've also just mentioned, this emphasis on the emptiness. But it's an emptiness that's not the absence of something. See, typically when we think of silence, we think of it just as the absence of sound. Emptiness is the absence of that which was there. But it's actually not. Real silence on a spiritual level is full. It's just full of that which exists when the nonsense isn't there. It's full of that which exists when the jabbering that's constantly going on in our brains calms down or the noise that's coming in from the world around us calms down. But it's a very full silence. And spiritual emptiness is also ironically fullness. If there's nothing, if there's nothing but God, then when I'm all gone, when I'm over, I've entered that state of stillness. There's no more me. So yeah, you could describe it as you've said the Buddhists do as emptiness. But you also could describe it as fullness because where half an hour ago 
I was feeling like this body. I was feeling like this mind. Now I am to enter the state of emptiness. There's no longer body mind. It's just become still. There's no longer me. But that emptiness is also very full. Because in that emptiness is everything. What there isn't any longer is a place where I end and the fullness begins. There's no distinction between me and the fullness. There's no separation. And so when we speak about porn, when you look at, you know, the mantra that we chant, Purnamada, Purnamidam, Purnat, Purnamudachate, Purnasya, Purnamadaya, Purnameva, Vishishate. What it means is, it's this exact teaching of the fullness that's infinite. So if, if God, by whatever name, whatever form, nameless, formless, it doesn't matter, however we conceive of that, even if it's, we just conceive of it as Buddha nature, if it's not a supreme reality, but it's just a Buddha nature, well, that nature is infinite. That nature is expansive. Nirvana has no borders. You can't say, well, what's the latitude and longitude of Nirvana? Where, where does it exist? Where does it end? And the rest of the world begins. It's, it's infinite. If that, the capital T, that, is infinite... And we, who have been created out of that, are reflections of that, manifestations of that, well, then we're also infinite, right? It's, it's mathematics, you know, 101. Infinity divided by 10 is infinity. Infinity divided by 7 billion is still infinity. Infinity divided by however many billions and billions of species have ever existed. Still infinity. So in that is fullness, is infinity. And yeah, it can feel empty. It can feel like a void because it's a void of my identity with my ego. It's a void of who I think I am, how I think the world is, how I've always interacted. We, we know the world. Our only way of knowing the world is through our five senses. Right? I mean, I know you're there because I can see you. If I close my eyes and you don't make any noise and you don't have any smell about you, I don't have any way of knowing you exist. Unless you came up and you touched me, then I could feel you. But if I can't see you, I can't smell you, can't taste you, can't feel you, can't hear you, you obviously still exist. My inability to know you exist has no impact on your existence. But to me, there is now emptiness, right? You were here. Now you're no longer here. Now you are still here, of course. I just have no way of knowing you anymore. So this is how we know the world. All of the knowledge that we have is that which we've acquired through these five senses, which is fine, but it's obviously very limited. It limits us only to those things. And so when, when I experience a state in my spiritual practice in which I'm not seeing or smelling or feeling or touching or tasting, and even, even on a deeper level, the very, 
the very presence of my organs of sensation no longer seem to be part of me. So it's not my nose is, but it's just not picking anything up. I'm not even any longer identified with the fact that I have an organ of smelling. It's a void. But into that void comes everything. When my jar of air breaks, I now have just air. But in order to have that experience of everythingness, I have to be prepared to have nothingness. You can't have a little something and everything. I can't have a small jar of air and everything. It's got to break. And that's where the emptiness and the fullness 